In our last episode, we learned that there's two types of juvenile salmon born in Deer Creek. Some will head downstream the year of their birth in an attempt to either rear in the Sacramento River or they'll make an immediate run to the ocean. Few, if any, will survive. The remaining juveniles will stay behind in Deer Creek for a year to grow and mature before making their ocean run. These hardy little fish are the last hope for a sustainable Deer Creek Spring Run Chinook Salmon population. In this episode, we head back out with Matt to try and find them. The seekers to keep the goggles in an old sock. That way, when you pull them out, <laughs> oh yeah, that's a, that's a healthy pair of goggles. What do your elf eyes see? Uh, I only saw a trout. Matt saw three adult Chinook. He's basically a river otter. Look at him over there. <laughs> Any salmon? The, I, there, I saw three adult spring run in the pool. I had, haven't seen any juveniles. Well, let me ask you, Matt. So we were out with you last fall, and we, you know, you had estimated there was 40 reproducing fish, I believe, on Deer Creek. Yeah. 18 in the stretch we were in. We only saw three. Is that the reason we're not seeing juveniles right now, maybe? Like, just low numbers in general? Yeah, I that would indicate to me why we didn't see juveniles in this pool. It's because of the really low numbers of spawners last fall. So they just didn't make a whole lot of babies. There weren't, there weren't enough, there weren't a lot of parents. So we're now uh, gonna swim this section of Deer Creek that we were actually, we were here last fall with Matt. Uh, this is one of the sections where we actually saw one female here, if I recall. But again, real, no, real low numbers on Deer Creek. And we're gonna be looking for juveniles right here. Did that you was, see all those juvenile spring runs? That was awesome. So we were, so yeah, so so those are what? We were saying they're what, nine months old? So yeah, we were just here last October and we were watching adult spring runs spawning right here. And these juveniles literally came out of the, the reds that we were watching being constructed yep. last October. And Spring run juveniles have a choice after they emerge. They can stay or go. And these particular ones chose to stay. They're going to spend a whole year here in Deer Creek before leaving for the ocean. But ultimately, all juvenile salmon have to go to the ocean at yeah. some point. So how many of these fish are even making it to the ocean? Well, it's it's not many. And, and that my opinion is informed by new and emerging science in the Central Valley. Um, we're doing a lot of acoustic tagging studies where we surgically implant uh, a miniaturized acoustic transmitter in a juvenile salmon. And then throughout the migratory corridor the fish have to follow, we place acoustic receivers that listen for the salmon when it swims by. And using this technology, we can determine overall survival 
from the release site to the ocean. And we can look at hot spots where areas of high mortality show up in the landscape. So there'd be like a sensor, a sensor, a sensor, yeah. and maybe the first sensor, all 50 get passed. We're still that's, alive. That's right. 20 get passed. Yeah. And the last sensor is two get passed. Is there a data comparison of mortality to other watersheds, the Rogue River or the Pacific Northwest? And, and if so, what does that look like? Yeah, this the acoustic tag technology really came out of the Pacific Northwest and the Columbia system where a large hydroelectric project um, results in a lot of issues for salmon and salmon passage, juveniles especially. And in comparison, sadly, the studies conducted in the Central Valley are showing the lowest survival of kind of really all the acoustic studies that have occurred throughout the Northwest. So our, our survival in the river system, in fresh water, that key, all these salmon at some point have to make it to the ocean. They don't, there's no option to stay and not go to the ocean. Um, we're just seeing really low survival for these fish. Uh, under total unimpaired flow conditions, rewind 150 years, say you would have two really poor years out of 10 where California is experiencing drought. And the, the, the other eight years, things are okay to really good. Nowadays, we have maybe two years out of 10 where conditions are really good when we have a lot of rain, a lot of storms, a wet year. A quick update. A lot has happened in this last year. Kyle and I have had daughters. Woo! Woo! We also have day jobs. And yeah, it takes a long time for these episodes to come out. And we obviously shot this last year in the drought. This year, we've had a ton of precip. The Sacramento River is all, all brown with all the runoff we've had. One water year, one high water year like this is not going to be enough to save juvenile salmon going into the future. One water year doesn't make a big difference as climate change continues to affect California's water supply. Back to the episode. The way water is managed now, uh, we have many more years, five, six out of ten, where Conditions in our major sy river systems look like drought in the spring months when juvenile okay. salmon are trying to outmigrate. We expect high productivity of juveniles in Upper Deer Creek. It's, it's once they start leaving Deer Creek and encountering first the smaller agricultural diversions in Deer Creek and then encountering this transition period in the Sacramento where losses begin to occur. In the springtime when we have the snow melt occurring, typically flows in April would be on the order of three to 400 CFS. Okay, okay. And I know we're in a dr major drought right now. Another quick reminder that we shot this conversation last year during the drought. And yes, we've had a lot of water this year, but this is kind of that one year in 10 that Matt is talking about. It's but a super dry super year. So Deer Creek's really low. The Sacramento here, you know, looks pretty big behind us, but this is probably a fourth to a third of what it would normally be during the, the spring runoff period. We're looking at about 5,000 CFS. We should be looking at 12 to 15,000 in here right now. And those are the conditions juvenile spring run evolved under for thousands of years to help them make that journey to the ocean, to help them get past the predators. Okay, I'm thinking of habitat typically of just being like a branch to hide under or, or you know, uh, when, you know, in this floodplain when we're up in these, uh, you know, grassy areas, you're saying that just water in itself just, flow is just cover. water itself is fish habitat. The real problem is there's just too many straws sucking water from the entire Sacramento River system these days. There's not enough water for the juvenile salmon to make it to the ocean. That's why they're not making it back to Deer Creek. This is what we would consider a widespread cumulative impact. There really isn't one person we can point to and say, turn the water back on. Cumulative impacts like water diversion and water use throughout an entire state system are some of the most complex and challenging conservation issues for us to solve. More bad news. Everything that we're talking about in this episode about Deer Creek also applies to the next creek to the north, Mill Creek, 
Deer and mill have very similar numbers, even though they're separate populations, similar numbers and very similar issues. Right now we're driving along, you know, former Deer Creek floodplain. Um, it's obviously now been levied, so we're above it. Uh, Deer Creek's over here to our left, and you know, we're about to drive by some cattle right here, and, and this is our trade-off. Our trade-off as a society has been, you know, eating more of this um, versus having wild salmon. Um, and we'd like to explore in the future those, those margins where maybe we can have a little bit of both. I like burgers, but I like wild fish too. This is, uh, this is pretty fun stuff. I've always wanted to be an actual wildlife biologist and we get to pretend I'm one today. There's a bunch down there. I mean, it's hundreds probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Down yeah. in the back of this pool, they were they were they were thick in there. Yeah. And that pointed out that you can see them just like a trout will kind of work, and they're kind of looking for food. They're going up and they're getting little things. And these little, you know, some of them are this big, some of them are a little bigger. You see the little salmon? They're in there right now. They're working. They're staying alive and they're eating. They're getting bigger. We've been talking about how Deer Creek is the population going down, and it is, but it's still. It's still really nice to see those fish. I mean, that's, yeah. there's always hope. We can always turn this around, you know? No, I, I love seeing juvenile spring run like, like that because it is hope. That is the future of the run. Those fish are gonna leave and we're gonna hope they make it and they'll come back and, and keep the population going. Yeah. Right now, we're on the divide between Mill Creek, which is behind me, and Deer Creek drops off 40 feet from where I'm standing. And we're here at the end of our Spring Run Chinook story. What does it mean to you to have, uh, and to all of us, to have a wild place like that and to have wild fish in it? Yeah, to, to have a wild place like that is really important, but the salmon really do it for me. Um, I can't imagine these canyons without spring run. Um, it, it would be really hard to return. Uh, they're, they're such, they have, they, to me, they bring so much meaning to the place. Um, the story of wild salmon, the, the journey, um, they go, they go through it, it's it's borders on the metaphysical it's sort of beyond comprehension that a tiny one inch fish can swim all the way out and go out into the vast pacific grow up and then return to a, a remote rugged place like this uh, to complete their life cycle right now the spring run chinook populations in mill creek and deer creek they're kind of on the verge of collapse. And folks like me, it's real easy for me to look back at previous generations and judge what they've done to bison or passenger pigeons or all these other charismatic species. When right now, right in front of our faces, spring run Chinook on the verge of going extinct. A great first step would be for us to figure out how juvenile salmon from Mill and Deer Creek can make it to the Pacific Ocean. And this is a beautiful rugged landscape but it's gonna be much more empty when spring run Chinook salmon don't return. Where the Wild Roam is hosted by Joe Flannery. My grandfather was a park ranger. My parents were both park rangers. I was the third generation. I've been lucky enough to spend my entire life outdoors, learning and working in conservation. And I'm excited to share that knowledge with you. With Kyle Lancaster. Lately, we've been getting into conservation filmmaking. We believe that a conservation ethic begins with education and understanding. Never stop learning about the natural world. And hey, if you like the show, please support, share, subscribe, follow, like, and all that stuff. Let's start a movement that prioritizes wildlife, wild places, 
and conservation within our daily lives. 